Hi, I'm Allie McDonald. I'm an assistant editor at O'Reilly Media. Today I'm talking with Steve Pusti, who is a developer evangelist at Red Hat on the OpenShift project. Thank That's you me. for joining me, Steve. Thanks for having me. So at Fluent, you're talking about um, using Leaflet, Node, and Mongo for creating web mapping experiences. So tell, tell me a little bit about that. So how so, are these tools work together to do spatial, you know, web apps. So I have actually been doing geospatial for a long time. I actually did it back in 89. And back then, the state of the art was there was no web. So, or there might have been, but certainly nothing with mapping. Um, and it's come along, but usually you had to be part of the high priesthood of GIS to mm -hmm. really make a map. And I think one of the things that's come along lately is this focus on quick and dirty web maps. And the nice part about Mongo is that it has a very quick and easy way to add spatial data and ask spatial questions, especially for pin on the map, you know, where you just put mm -hmm. a pin down and pins are moving, but not complicated models, right? Like if you're going to do some sort of complicated fire model, it's not going to work. But if most applications that you see people building are some sort of pin on the map. And so they have a really nice interface for just putting data in and working with it. And then Node is really nice because it's very, especially with Express, it's mm -hmm. really easy to make a REST web service. And you know, I was just talking to some people in the booth about this, but one of the things I really like that we've started to evolve towards is server side just does data, right? You send a request, you get data, or you send some data, and then you get data back, and client side handles all the display. And so with Express, that's really easy to do. And then Leaflet is this great open source library that actually also works with OpenStreetMap, which mm -hmm. is another one of my favorite projects. It's kind of the Wikipedia of maps, crowdsourced. Okay. Um, and so with Leaflet, I'm sending JSON back from the Express application to Leaflet, and Leaflet just turns those into pins and drops them on the map. And then it has methods built in to like send the bounding box of the screen back to the Express. So then I tell Express, okay, here's the bounding box, grab all the points inside the bounding box. And then it sends them all back as JSON, and then I just loop through it and put pins on a map. And that ma I've shown this app to, I don't know, hundreds of people at this point, and almost every show, by the end of the show, someone comes up and says, oh, hey, I took your application, and I made it do this. Like one group uh, made historic trees in Spain. They apparently have a mm -hmm. database of historic trees, and they started putting pins on the map. Um, I've, it's so easy, even my market analyst friend, Gordon Half, he saw it, did it in Python, because I have an example also running in Python. Did it in Python, but then put, he loves canoeing mm -hmm. in the Northeast, and so he made a whole bunch of USGS river gauge stations as points on the map. And you can click on it, and it shows the little graph, and, but he did it in like a couple days, and he does, he's not even really a coder. So it's, I think it's really made it easy for people to build maps that show things that would have been much harder before. Yeah. Ooh, and the other thing about Leaflet <laughs> is it's, uh, it's built mobile ready. Okay. Right, so it's not like you have to do some sort of funky thing to make it work on the mobile. You can look at it on your tablet, you can look at it on the mobile, or you can look at it on the web. So it's just, it's just a really nice and easy experience to do most of the mapping that a lot of people need. Yeah, I had no idea that you know it'd been a, been around. You've been you've been working in it since 1989. That's surprising to me because it just seems like something that you know people are just starting to use now, with like the advent of using Foursquare and mobile right. apps all the time. So it's it's cool that you know it has been around. But are there recent developments or things that is there a reason you think that people are getting more into it now? Or um, I think some of the things that have well so back before when yeah. I when I first learned it, I was using a Solaris machine. I don't even know if it was. Was, was it SunOS or Solaris? But it was basically a sun machine and you know the, the old laser mice that they yeah. used to have. And you had to know Unix to use it. Um, the bookshelf was about this long for all the manuals. It was very scientific software. And that was all that was available because software creation back in the 80s and even in most of the 90s wasn't, it was only later towards the 90s where even um, building web applications became easier, I'd say, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's part of what's helped. And there's been more people coming in and saying, oh, well, there's this spatial problem I want to solve. And that seems way too complicated, but I know how to run software and, or build software, and I also understand how to make it a bit quicker and easier. And so I'm going to build just what I need rather than building this big enterprise solution, right? So I think it's from not trying to boil the ocean, mm -hmm. but really just trying to solve specific use cases that it's become simpler for certain people. Yeah. Uh, and I, I enjoy it a lot because yeah. I always, I love maps. I think maps relate to people. Like I go into my kids' class to show them maps. I'm like, mm -hmm. here's our house. Here's the ice cream store. And I like, this is what I do for work. And like 10 kids come up afterwards like, what do you do again? <laughs> I want to do that. Look at those maps. And I'm really glad that more web developers can get into mapping without having to spend 
five to six years learning all the spatial technology and stuff. Yeah, no, that's great. It seems like, you know, with data visualization and mapping, people are more and more, you know, not necessarily with programming backgrounds wanting to get into it because right. it is, you know, really interesting being able to use all sorts of different data, like historical trees to canoeing. It's, you know, not, you know, the boring stuff you would assume right. would go into, you know, programming something, but it, that sounds really cool. So. And, and I think one of the other things is we've had, I think another great piece that we'll probably see over the next couple of years is D3. Because mm -hmm. um, Bostock, Mike Bostock, the, one of the original writers, was really interested in mapping. Yeah. And he's done some really neat stuff. Um, browsers are now powerful enough and the bandwidth is now good enough that you can actually do a whole bunch of mapping, really interesting mapping, just in the client, not even any server side anymore. So mm -hmm. I think it'll be really neat to see what comes with that. I think one of the caveats that comes with this though is, it's the same thing with people starting to learn some statistics and just enough statistics to be dangerous. Yeah. Like people learn just enough mapping and just enough mapping to be dangerous and it's very easy to lie with maps. Mm -hmm. So I think people, and there's this tendency when, oh, it's on a computer, it must be the truth. Yeah. Right? So I think that it'll be interesting to see how society evolves to become more sophisticated about what they see on a map in the same way that they should become more sophisticated about statistics as well. Great. Well, this has been really interesting. Thank you for joining me. Thanks. All right. Enjoy my session tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. Okay. <laughs>